Hello, hello, and welcome to my Let's Play of Divinity uh, Sin 2. What is it called? Is it Original Sin 2? <laughs> I've already forgotten. Shit. Anyways. <clears throat> I've already completed my character. I'm going to give you a run through of what it is. He's an undead human. He's a shadow blade, as you can tell. I have Scoundrel. Polymorph and Thievery. Thievery helps me with pickpocketing. Polymorph helps me every year attribute point per investment. And then Scoundrel increase my move speed and boost my critical modifier. Um, got some skills if you want to read them. I personally haven't played this game, so I don't know what it's going to be like. Hopefully I'll do all right. Uh, I got Pet Pal as my talent. I was thinking about going with like Torture or some shit like that, but at the end of the day, oh, Opportunist. No, it's not that bad either. My tags are Human, Male, Undead, Mystic, and Outlaw. Um. Actually, I'm gonna go with Outlaw. <clears throat> and then my interest in it is the fucking Bansuri. Okay, so apparently it comes with more issues than what I know. To, I know. All right, I'll shut up now. I should turn on subtitles. Fuck. It all happened like I knew it would. A single drop of sauce. Flies to honey. The monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. And the magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared. And sent to Fort Joy. Oh shit. I'd come here to kill God Woken. But instead I became part of their story. Original Sin, that's what it is. And I do have the definitive version, so you know, follow them. Still a bit groggy, are we? Don't worry. The sedative will wear off soon enough. Easy now. No need to hurry. Get your bearings and report to me upstairs. Uh, yes, ma'am. Got a bag over my face? Well, look what the doctor... You're lucky they didn't notice just how thin you were under those bandages. Although, seeing someone wrapped up like that, they probably thought you had the scabbing plague. Hey, look, laugh, but don't touch. Oh, you can touch me, baby. <laughs> the living don't take kindly <clears throat> seeing their future. I almost just spoke. I almost fucking chucked on my spit there. That would have been embarrassing. Sorry, I just, I just shut up when I was talking. <laughs> uh, Sorry, I'm gonna look through the tutorial because I haven't played this game before. Yo, Kazo, what do you have in here? Gold? Don't mind if I do. Uh, 
Oh, do I do got poison with me? Got a backpack that's seemingly bottomless. Well. Let's go, bro. What I do? Oh, I'm gonna stop fucking with shit before I uh, regret whatever I'm doing. Oh, nope. I got a deck of playing cards. Said nobody ever. It's an ooze barrel. I won't fuck with that. Okay. Alright, let's get the fuck out of here. <clears throat> Enough waiting around, mate. Let's get the fuck out of here, why don't ya? I'm not clicking and dragging them, okay? Oh, this game's gonna be fucking dope. I'm already enjoying it. Well, not enjoying it, but I'm already uh, excited. It already seems interesting. Sky, freight, or food. What's up, Holmes? In her fluffy coat, the sheep eyes you balefully. Her rectangular eyes like letterboxes to the void. With one sharp hoof, she kicks you right in the shin. Banded like a chicken's leg. But not much meat on your bones. <laughs> That may be so, but look at the flies. Burn wisdom. <laughs> no when a creature will die. And it's around your head they're buzzing, not mine. With two shakes of her stumpy tail, the sheep turns away from you to peruse her hay-filled manger. Hold up, is anybody in here? I'm not letting this fucking... Yo, pig! Oh, I don't know how I did that. What I click? Ah, uh, I fucked up. Okay, that's an L. Get your dirty little paws out of my head. Well, that hurt my feelings. Fuck like hell I do. Oh shit, never mind. Did you expect a needle? Oh, it's tough. I know I can move it like that. Did you expect a needle? No, but I expected to fucking find. I answer that one. Wait a minute, am I supposed to come up here? In this arc. My dumbass, okay. That's what I get for not paying attention. Your trauma. It was bled by magic. Why you're looking there you are. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. Dungeon? You have the gall to call my laboratory a dungeon? 
I'd be quite annoyed with you if you didn't look so honestly perplexed. Index fingers pressed to her lips. She pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. A new life awaits, and if you're a particularly good boy, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For good. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. Oh, do go on. I won't hold it against you. <laughs> my, aren't we a meek little lamb? Perhaps I needn't have collared you at all. Though it does look darling on you. So let's just leave it on, shall we? Because to answer your question, what this collar does is this. It makes you unable to cast Source. Eat dick. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world's. No, oh, touch it. <laughs> I almost took it. Good gods. There's there's been a ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Finn was killed by Sauce. If a Magister could do that, there wouldn't be a Magister. It looks more like a passenger managed to slip their collar. And the rest, well, you see the evidence in front of you. Listen. I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? I was gonna say, I was gonna say if I can, uh... Behind the Magister, a bloodied mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. Um. Can't open his corpse. <laughs> Listen, it's like a bad idea, action of mum. Thanks, Dick. Ah, oh, there you are. Um, husband, would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses to be confused with anyone else. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and git, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? Guess you aren't a creative type, are you, Chief? I say they're one and the same. Thanks, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for it. You take care, though. Nope. Trying not to find anything out, either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Greyish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Weird. Up, Chief? 
All right, well. We're like cattle to them. I'll give you that. An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. She shakes her head. Game for one, I'm afraid. Ah! Dice. Deciding fates. Don't worry, honey. It isn't yours. She looks you up and down with the merest tint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never, though. She eyes you quite seriously. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it, too. I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? She looks at you in surprise when you bear an arm of bone. My. Guess I'll have to find out the memory from Marrow, won't I? She gives your arm a vigorous stroke of the tongue. Huh? <laughs> Grooming. Hmm. You were in a cellar with other sorcerers, watching, staring at them, hoping that none would stare back. You were thinking of flesh, or to be rather more precise, the pleasures of the flesh, those that have eluded you for so long. She pats you on the shoulder, consoling. <laughs> There, there, don't you worry, darling. Your secret's safe with me. I don't lick and tell. Appreciate it, honey. Can I sit here? What's up, lads? How you doing? A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, boy. You hear that? As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hang you right over the side of this ship with him. The ship, of course. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates. The groaning of wood from floor to ceiling. The boom, crash and crackle of waves around you. Complaints from the sea itself. And I've seen more appetizing things coming out of plague stricken pigs. There's there's nothing else I can make. The fellow cocks his ear, listening. That is an anger. It's he cocks his ear to the other side, then smiles. Anticipation. She senses something. I'd hold on to my breeches if I were you, mate. That's all you hear though. Listen close. Jesus Christ, am I like <laughs> okay? Just like that. Squeak. Aha. His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back, the other catches you before you lose your footing. All right. You heard that, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, boy. Good news. It's the wheel, the wheel. Don't you see, you beautiful idiot? Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we are heading east. This dude has ears of a fucking beard. That means if we've been traveling for, yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. Captain, actually. That figure tells me we're getting close to the joy. Close to what lies beyond it, too. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, boy. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. <laughs> Why does everybody hate me? A divine order loyal. They killed a sorcerer, you know. They'll hide the evidence well enough, but make no mistake. Alright, girl. The Red Prince, Lemma. Yo, Fane, my dog. 
The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks, he reaches out and examines. He sits back and returns to his book, flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. Tell me, what do you know of your... our world's history? Oh, please. I have no interest in that. Your books are too full of it already. No. I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your gods. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? <sighs> of course you don't have any useful information. Okay, fine. Go fuck yourself then. Anything else. Jesus. Now please run along. I have a w No amount of pestering will get the elf to take his eyes off his Yeah, yeah. Do away with the custom. Well, uh, well, well. What have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. I kind of want to do this one, but I like... I'm inspecting your teeth. In case that wasn't spectacularly obvious. Hmm. There's some discoloration, as well as a rather disconcerting lack of tongue and gums, but I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little shit like this. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? And, of course, a cook who can't taste is about as useful as a dog in a chess game. On to the second question. Can you knit, weave? In short, uh, tailor? Stick, stick a thumb through one of the holes in your car and say these provide cool in summer. Oh, but to feel the caress of satin on my scarlet skin once more. And on, then, to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. The very basics. So, three questions asked, three... As per your own testimony, you can tailor... Still, beggars can't be choosers. So without further ado, I offer you my sincerest congratulations. As a what? Child, you are my slave. You should probably come to terms with the fact that you've half a mind, full stop. Rain in your impertinence, will you? I'm a fair man, but I won't spare the rod. Anyway, you may leave me for a moment. I spent my life singing for my slaves to bring me my supper. Finer fare than boiled roots and rotten tubers, too. Rotten tubers, too. Oh. While the magisters feast on honeyed meat behind this very wall. The indignity. Never thought you'd I'm busy watching for clues, sorcerer. Alright, fine, I won't talk to you then. A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face, he stares across at the Magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board, and I'd bet three months' pay it's this trampy fan. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. He leans in and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Pinches less that way, right? Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen Magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifan. And now, you. We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? I am his own fucking commander. Standing far back from Ifan, the tight-faced magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. 
Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is somebody gave him a bigger sword and now he's Johnny Big Pants. Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy. Away from interested parties. No. The dead man, Finn, is it? I'd no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down without good reason. He glances over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. The joy, I've heard a mm. lot. Um. Nothing good. No surprise there, since Bishop Alexander runs the show. Wonder if we'll get to meet the ringmaster himself. Mm. Easy now. I might think the same. But Vic here will blow a blood vessel if he hears you talking like that. What are you conspiring about over there? You? What's your name? Oh, don't mind him. Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet. And that bee is me. Name? Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously, then scrawls something illegible down in a tiny notebook. He scowls at you as he stows the notebook back in his voluminous robes. I'll find out. I always do. Now away with you, at once. Suck my dick. Fan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips, as he leans back against the wall. To register, sir. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. Magister Williams. You faring okay so far? Of course I do. Seems void walking dog your heels like a shadow. That's no way to live, is it? You'll see. We're gonna help you. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. I guess so, bro. And if she tries to run, shoot to kill. Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous-looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. I see. So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella? Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. Good God, the woman's mad. You there, sorcerer, go and fetch Magister Siwan. We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. Hold up. I'm just about to create a scene. Subdue her, man, quickly! If she casts source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely. Yo, Kazo, we're fighting her. Oh, my boss got fucked. What's what's happened? Good God! She's murdered them all. Oh, that wasn't too loud. Uh, we got a fucking shiv. Let's go. Where's our hand, Matt? Empty. 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 Oh, that's how I do that. Okay. At least I know that now. We'll read that now after I grab the rest of this. Alright. Before we carry on. Um. Put that there. I guess that there. Alright. Oh, just fucking requisitions for food. 
food. A few of them are in good spirits, especially the children. The others are sullen. Don't blame them. Change is rough. But they'll make new friends sooner or later. And when we cure them for good, they'll be thanking us, not cursing. Well, most of them. The elf of the dice, that lone loaf, the creaky, uh, the creaky voiced woman in the kitchen. Some folks won't get over it. Reckon they won't be the first to get cured if they're cured at all. If they've cured at all, I mean. Alright, um, first things first, let me go wake up Beast. The dwarf lies in a heap on the floor, his great beard twisted and tangled around him. You hear a faint thud, thud, thud. He's alive, but only just. The dwarf lies in a heap on the floor. <laughs> I am not using a bucket as a helmet. Fuck you, game. No, not the final dark. Not yet. Her hand lies limp in your. The dice roll darkly. They're rolling for me. Interesting. Uh, I this dude. If Anne lies motionless, curled on the ground like an animal, under his shack, his eyes flicker open, but he doesn't register your presence at all. Lucian, Lucian. If Anne cries out, then his eyes fall closed again. No matter how much you shake him now, he cannot be roused. Right. Well, let's do this. Yeah, so where the fuck is the restoration score at? Small poison bottle. A journal. Mug of wine, potato, blah blah blah, whatever. <laughs> Don't understand though, am I I don't understand if I'm supposed to fucking take them with me or not. Damn. The hound pours desperately at his snout. It winces as it draws blood from its wet black nose and continues scratching. The dog notices you for the first time and snarls. The hairs on its back prickling as it lowers itself into a lunge. It sneezes suddenly and paws at its nose once more. Can't smell. Can't breathe. Too much sauce. Too much. Please, make it stop. The dog whines and continues pawing at its nose. Can I help him? Nope, he's just fucked. I'm not against that, but... God damn it! Need to get off this wreck and quick! Shut up, mate! I'm trying to grab all the fucking shit. Recently, judging from its pungent scent, you press your palm against the door to open it. 
Your fingers clack against the wood, and you suddenly feel grey. The touch leaves you numb, dull. Yeah, fuck that. I ain't going in there. Uh, I'm just gonna go right up here. All right, cause you guys are dead, and then yeah, fuck okay, you guys. Doesn't, doesn't poison heal me though? Just your hop, uh, click on the second. Oh fuck, what did I just do? I'm already getting ass. And I don't like it. I'm not gonna do that. What the fuck does that even do? A thing? And I also wait, I just realized I wasted my fucking first poison. Hundred and twenty, fuck yeah. You bone bastard. Get down the Can I kill her? The Magister lies on the floor, unconscious and bleeding. Personally, I would have just stabbed her while she was down, but that's just me. Wait! Void woken! 
There's so fucking many. That's pretty dope. There's all hatchling. We should be all right then. Jesus. A fucking earthbender? What the fuck? I'm kidding. Uh -huh. That's a badass fucking ability. My boy just got fucked. Once I'm gonna hold on, once I'm dead. Oh, my boy just fucking bombed me. We need to move. Come on, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's go, boys. We gotta get in. Sounds like she needs help. You're kidding. There's no time. I get left? Are you kidding? At least I'm a fucking uh skeleton, you feel me? I'm already dead, am I not? So how can I die again? Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard are presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity. Hi, Judge Orivan. All right. <clears throat> How long have I been recording for? Let's see. Forty-three minutes. Those void woken made short bloody work of the ship. Am I the lone survivor? It seems someone, something, wanted me alive. You have anything? I have my items still. That's nice. It's not gonna fully restart. Hell if I know, bud. Hell if I know. 
Hey, Tam. Tam Tam. The child has a small mirror in his hands. He holds it up at angles, inspecting his eyes, his chin, the crown of his head. He spots you, and his arms snap to his sides. I'm going to take all the luck picks. Should probably read the journal. What am I doing? I don't need a lockpick. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. The child considers your statement. You're weird. Are you a sorcerer? One of those guys that brings the bad void things here. The child looks at you straight on, unafraid, searching the shadows cloaking your face. He lifts his mirror to his nose. Closes one eye and looks at himself again. I don't see any source on you or me. I guess they're wrong or crazy. No one cares where I go. They know I can't leave the island. It's nicer out here than inside anyway. They're gone now. The Magisters took them already. I guess now they're cured. And maybe they're waiting for me back at home. But you didn't die. There isn't anywhere safer. That's what I mean. You'll see. I guess I am. But it's just normal to be scared. Nowhere isn't scary. Alright. Well, little dude. I wish you luck. Whatever you're trying to do. What am I supposed to do here? It says I can use it, but what the fuck? It just gives me the. Must be a thousand years old. Ah! Why can't I reach it? Am I stupid? Quite possibly. Oh god. Oh my damn ass, I didn't even know this was here. <clears throat> oh, there. Are these guys okay, are both void links. Hey, it's Jalen. Void woke. Those are the same beasts that sank our ship. Damn, they made it to shore. You, I know. Can I? I can. I actually might die.
Hmm. I'm fucking retarded. <laughs> I forgot that I couldn't heal. No, I thought I, I know I couldn't use like I guess it's still this healing. No man. Of course I missed. Look at him run. Yeah, bitch. I just said. I thought these bloody collars were supposed to keep those things at bay. Drowned and eaten by a void woken. I wonder in which order. Okay, he's learning about crafting. Do, 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 do. Look here, Quirkus. Another giant. My word, this blasted isle is teeming with them. What's that? Yes, I did see how it made short work of the great acorn servants. Quite right, very impressive. But that is no reason to trust it. Giants like that destroyed our forests. They are the very reason the great acorn is returning in all its wrath. What? Dear me, have you taken leave of all six of your senses? You would have me use this giant for a shield? Why would I... Oh, I see. You cunning devil, Quirkus. Of course, if it defeated the great acorn's vile servants, it can do so again. We need only follow in its big, wide shadow and be safe. Egad! It speaks our tongue, Quirkus. Hush before. What do you mean a good time for introductions? You know full well who I am, you silly old cat. The great Solora, grandest of the... Oh, introduce myself to the giant. I shall do no such thing. You give away your trust too easily, my dear steed. No, we will have the giant march. In time, we'll see whether it deserves our confidence. Now, onwards! Shield! Venture forth, post haste! The great acorn waits for no- Waits for no one, yeah. Yo, the Red Prince, what's up, homie? You spot a strange lizard, gazing over the water with a steady, malcontent stare. His skin is of a bright, blood-red colour. Could he be- Yes, you recognise him from the ship. It would seem you're not the only one who survived the tentacles of the deep. The lizard turns about with the graceful ease of a dancer, or a duelist. You lock eyes with his, two smoldering embers that sizzle your very soul. And a dutiful servant you are too. That was a joke, dickhead. I wouldn't have survived that shipwreck. 
Did you not return to the aid of your master down that dreadful <laughs> have my gratitude. Hand over heart, he salutes you with a bob of the head. More than a nod, though less than a bow. Yes, I'm sure you've all the makings of a hero and all that, but let's not get carried away, shall we? Nevertheless, one good turn does deserve another, so as far as the whole slave business is concerned, let's just forget about it. Get the fuck out of pussy! Ah! Now then, if there's nothing further. If you really must know, I haven't quite decided yet. I have a frightful amount of things on my mind, hence my standing here contemplating the waves. He sighs dramatically. Tell me, what do you see when you cast your glance over this ocean? Memories. Quite so. He looks out over the water once more, and so do you. A few tranquil moments pass as the waves lap against your thoughts. As for myself, when I consider this vast expanse before us, I see an empire. All right. I see continents dotted with mighty cities. And shimmering along the soft curve of the sea's horizon, I picture the palaces that formed my paradise. Lost. What do you mean, what do I mean? I mean just what I say. I had a very actual empire that I lost. Suddenly, having all the air of being deeply offended, he stares at you with utter incredulity. Well, don't just stand there gawking like an ape at an abacus. Or do you really mean to tell me you don't know who I am? Well, more's the damn pity, isn't it? For I am the Red Prince. The old conqueror. The world tamer. The spouse of the sun. Of course you know me. There's a brief moment's pause, during which his grandiloquent pose deflates ever so slightly. Hi, Holmes. Oh. That said, I suppose uh, I must own up sure. to the fact that I find I'm... myself rather in between all conquering and world taming opportunities at the moment. The grandeur that is my fate has uh, hit a bit of a snag. But never you worry. For the throne I was destined, and my throne I shall have. Truly. A kind offer indeed. And you've already proven to be trustworthy enough. You came back for the others on that ship after all. Fine, I accept. On one condition. For reasons I'll not disclose right now, it is imperative that I should meet with a dreamer. One of the mystics of my kind. I've reason to believe one of them may be present on this island. Promise me we'll look for him and I'll extend you the blessing of my company. Jolly good. Oh, my word. How you do astound me. Come now, did you really think a handful of linen towels can fool me? Oh. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> I have studied the arcane arts for years, including necromancy and demonology. I do not hold the petty prejudices of common folks. In fact, I prefer the exceptional in all things. Your secret is safe with me. So, now that that's settled, first things first. Even if you are as versed in the art of eloquence as I am, that our swords will be doing a lot of the talking from here on out goes without saying. As a born fighter, I prefer the perfection of the blade myself. But I'm well acquainted with the secrets of magic, and yes, even subterfuge. What say you? Very well. Onwards then to victory or death. The Red Prince nods and gives you a smile that wavers ever so delicately between courtesy and contempt. Now, as you're away, you'll be traveling with a prince. Proper forms of address include your majesty, your royal highness, or, or if you're feeling particularly frivolous, my lord. No. As your luck would have it, I seem to be fresh out of luggage, so you won't be required to carry my belongings. Of course, there are other forms of protocol to bear in mind, but I'll see to it you'll pick up the rest as we go.
Actually, before we carry on, I think... I think that's where I'm gonna end the first episode. Uh, me and the Red Prince finally got together. Along with Sir Laura. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all later.